Hey everybody, this is Sabrina. I'm so glad that you came over here and visited my site. And as you can see, there's a lot of really cool stuff down there about music and art and experimental media, electronica, ambient stuff, animation, machinima, and sci-fi and all that kind of weird stuff that I really like. Um, I just wanted to thank you for coming to the site and I hope you enjoy checking out some things. Now, some folks wanted to ask me, why did I become a composer? Now that's a pretty good question considering in the US I'd say maybe psh, less than 5% of all composers today, maybe 10% the most, are female. Which, it would be kind of weird. You'd think it's 2000 and like, what, 16 now? And people would, you know, it wouldn't matter. But it just so happens that, yeah, even though that more music majors are female nowadays, there's actually not a lot of women in composition. Uh, there's also not a lot of women in conducting, and other fields like filmmaking have the same issue. Now the question is, why is that? Um, which is a very good question. I mean, if you think about it in the visual arts nowadays, um, in pop music, um, in writing novels, um, it seems that women, um, as the creator of something amazing, um, have not had a problem uh, starting to go ahead and, and really, you know, show that they have incredible ideas to share, and people love it. Um, but in composition and in conducting, it's part of a very rich, rich, old tradition. Um, and in this rich, 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 old tradition, um, there are very, um, there's some kind of like unsaid rules. Like for instance, um, not only do female composers have issues trying to get their music played, living composers in general, male, female, or fish, whatever you might be, um, all have problems getting their music written. Uh, and I mean, uh, compose, uh, getting their music played. And there's a lot of different reasons about that. Um, one of the reasons is pure economics. Um, an orchestra that is struggling in the economy that we have today might choose a Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, um, you know, do the Nutcracker like 6,000 times because the people that typically buy the expensive tickets are actually the guys that um, like that stuff. And they think that, oh, anything past 1930 is such newfangled avant-garde. <sighs> okay. Anyway, whatever. Um, the problem is those folks are dying out, like they've been dying out for like the last 10 years or so. And instead of replacing them with new music from living composers, we don't all decompose, you know. Um, instead, what they're doing is simply just keep pushing out the same stuff over and over again. Which is ironic when you consider that in classical music, when Mozart was presenting his music to everybody, they were excited because it was new music. Oh my gosh, it's a new work by Mozart! Or, oh no, it's a new work by Mozart! But either way, they were excited because it was a work by Mozart, a person that was right there, sometimes often playing the music or conducting it themselves. Today, it seems like classical music is just kind of stuck in this big tornado of, oh, we must play things that are thousands or a hundred or three hundred years old, and we must only play things by dead white guys with big wigs. Wigs. Um, well, that's a problem for living composers, male or female. Then you add on to the, you know, some of the other issues that are often common in academia. Um, for instance, you know, tenure track professors in uh, music institutions, especially conservatories, tend to be older males. And even if there's not an intrinsic, you know, outright, oh, I'm not going to hire her because she's female, people have a tendency to hire people that look like them, that have the same ideals as them. Even if um, uh, one person is a much better candidate, if candidate A is a much better candidate, but they have a different background or experience or look different or just something that is a little off because maybe you didn't grow up with it, and candidate B may have the same experience or even just slightly less, you're bound to choose candidate B without even noticing it, um, which is why there's all these trends of, well, if, you know, who's ruling the, the music uh, world and uh, the music academia stuff, and those are the folks that they hire. So even if they don't purposely do this, um, when you look at a music school and you see that pretty much almost everybody is male, um, even when in the last, you know, couple decades, I mean, there's plenty of females in plenty of fields, then you know that there's a problem. So, um, all I have to say, why become a composer? Um, well, ironically, there actually are lots and lots of female composers, tons and tons of them. However, they are not writing string quartets. Some of them are. Some of them are writing amazing works. Jennifer Higdon, which is a Pulitzer Prize winner, is quite impressive with um, just the magnificent work she does. Uh, Alex Shapiro, another amazing composer, uh, has taken up uh, writing for middle school bands, which is amazing because not only does this create new music, this creates a new audience for new music. They actually get to play this music themselves. Um, but a lot of the women have decided to go into electronic music because there's not um, any sort of... Uh, there's not as long as a tradition in that. 
um, there's not as many barriers. Essentially, I can sit here and like I did a couple years ago with my computer, with some people online that I met online, uh, I created an entire opera. I didn't need to secure funding for that. I didn't need to get permission from the university to do that. I didn't need to ask anybody except for the people that, hey, you want to collaborate with me on making an opera. And that's what we did. So we created Libertarian, the virtual opera. Um, and I also collaborated with Lee Scott and we did a social media opera. Once again, we didn't have to worry. I mean, you know, there, there are some things you have to worry about, but you want to make an opera? Nowadays you have technology, email your friends, you have a thousand friends on Facebook, somebody's bound to help you. So what's great about that is that now there is an entire network of women that are in electronic music internationally. And they're creating works in many genres, from anything from electronica, dance music, um, EDM, uh, opera like me, um, and all kinds of different things. So anyway, back to why I wanted to be a composer. Well, actually, I wanted to be a drummer first. And so I first uh, spent way too much time in a practice room uh, trying to be, I wanted to be the first female timpanist of the Boston Pops because that's what I thought would be the most prestigious and lovely thing to do. Plus, I just think they play really cool music, and I love them. I heart Boston Pops. Heart. Heart them. Um, anyway, so uh, that's what I wanted to do, but then I ended up getting into electronic music and composition and film even, and that's what I ended up doing with my life. Um, and I just love it. I love going ahead and creating new ideas. I like mixing it with other things. I really like visual imagery. Um, and even though, believe it or not, I'm a really big talker, did you, can you not tell? Um, I'm also into visual imagery and I love film and I love how, you know, the visuals just come together with some sort of audio and you can just create this amazing experience for everyone. Uh, my next idea is actually I want to create a video game opera. So that's my next idea. My problem, you know, I have to go ahead and find the time to do that. Libertaria took about three years. Um, I'm hoping this one won't take as long, uh, but you never know. These things take time. So anyway, but that's why I wanted to be a composer. I like to create new things for people. I like to uh, break new ground. I like to create things that are groundbreaking that, you know, um, maybe haven't been done before. Um, I also like to make things that are free because um, I like to make art for everybody, uh, regardless of what you look like, how much you, you know, how much money you make, um, female, male, whatever. Like, I just want to make sure that you have a chance to enjoy some really good music. So anyway, that's all to say. So that's why I'm a composer, and I know I talk an awful lot, and I haven't really been vlogging much um, and stuff, but I'm hoping to be able to do this occasionally. So if there's any questions that you have about composition, music marketing, video, animation, sci-fi, I don't know, the price of tea in China, which you could probably just Google. Um, anyway, but if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below, and I will go ahead and uh, take the time to hopefully um, write back you know, answers, and um, I don't know. So I'm just gonna try this vlogging thing and see if it works out. So thanks again for being here. Subscribe, I'm trying, or subscribe, I don't know, subscribe, subscribe. I guess it depends on which kind of device you are going with, but subscribe, please subscribe. Um, so, all right, thank you so much guys, and thanks for listening, and happy music making, happy art making, and you are awesome, so awesome. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm.